results. This session is on calculation of consolidation test results. With the previous video, hope you have understood the audiometer test procedure as per the IS2720 part 15. Who haven't seen the audiometer test procedure, link is in the description. Do watch. The result of the consolidation test are plotted in the form of a plot between the void ratio and the effective stress. It is therefore required to determine the void ratio at various load increments. There are two methods. First method is the height of solid method and another is the change in void ratio method. The first method is general method applicable to the both saturated and unsaturated salts and another method is applicable only for the saturated salts as we will be going with the general method known as height of solid method let me recap you the previous observation data this is the data obtained while executing the procedures the time pressure imposed is 0 0.1 0 0.2 0.51248 These are the deformation readings. The deformation reading with respect to pressure of 0.1 kg per centimeter square with respect to time. Like that for 0.2 kg per centimeter square this is the deformation data with respect to time. Like this, these are the dial gauge data obtained with the different pressure intensities. Now let me take you to the tabular chart for the calculations. These are also the observations obtained while executing the experimentations. Now the intensity of the pressure I have copied I have copied here and the final dial gauge data, the applied pressures and final dial gauge readings are copied here. These are your final dial gauge readings for the time 10 minutes 1440. Once we get this applied pressure and the dial gauge readings, then the calculation part starts. The first is to find out the change in the thickness known as delta H. The delta H is obtained here with the 20 minus 19.95. It is 0 0.05. The next one is 19.95 minus 19.75. It gives you 0.2. Like this, so we people have to calculate the change in the thickness known as delta H. Next, we have to calculate the height with respect to the applied pressures. Now, this is my H naught 19.77. This is the height of the sample thickness here, it has been given. This is 19.77 is my H0. H0 minus 0 0.05 gives you 19.72. 19.72 minus 0.2 gives you 19.52. 19.52 minus 0.46 gives you 19.06. So on, we have to calculate for H. Nextly, going for the height of the voids, known as volume of the voids, is calculated as H minus Hs. The H is the known value now. You need to find out what do you mean by Hs. Again, with H minus Hs gives you the value of volume or height of the voids with the pressure of 0.1 so on we have to calculate the height of the voids finally the voids ratio is to be calculated now voids ratio is given as volume of voids divided by volume of solids the volume of void is already known value how to calculate the vs volume of solids this I'll be mentioning you. Once we obtained the voids ratio, then plotting of the graph for applied pressure versus 
the voids ratio is to be obtained. After obtaining the data, a plot of E versus effective stress is drawn. A plot between the final voids ratio and effective stress is required for determination of the magnitude of the consolidation settlement in the field. By this curve, coefficient of compressibility and coefficient of volumetric change, AV and MV, are obtained. The slope between two points are different. Put up the values in the equation of AV and MV. Datas are obtained. In practice, average of AV and MV are taken into account to determine the magnitude of consolidation settlement. In some practice, AV and MV values are considered from the ultimate applied pressure. In our case, it is 8 kg per centimeter square. This is all about how to calculate AV and MV. With the next session, we will be moving to how to find out the log method and square root time fitting methods. Thank you.